Hi, Debbie. Hi, thanks for having me. Really, really glad to have you here. I was just saying backstage um, that Debbie had spoken about the tyranny of the pink aisle. And I never, even though I have two daughters, understood what that really meant. I thought it was a metaphor until I was in Target yesterday. And lo and behold, there is an aisle that is entirely pink. And it's all girly, girly, kind of plasticky, nice stuff. What Debbie is trying to do with Goldie Blocks um, is shake that up for the good of our children and hopefully create a business out of it. So tell us a little bit about it. So I, still, I started Goldie Blocks just a couple years ago, really. And uh, the reason I started the business is because I studied engineering at Stanford and there were very few women. And after I graduated, I went on to see my male classmates do things like start Facebook and Instagram and start taking over the world. And I started doing research and found that only 14% of engineers are women and they're the fastest growing fields. So I uh, dug a little deeper and saw that girls are losing interest in engineering and math and science as young as age eight. And that leaky pipeline starts very young. And if you look at the world through the eyes of a little girl, uh, she's inundated with princesses and makeup and cosmetics and beauty queens and all the boys get Handy Manny and Bob the Builder and Legos and Thomas the Train. So that's when I decided I was gonna put my engineering degree to use and start a business around a character named Goldie Blocks who was a girl engineer and create construction toys and books and media with the adventures of this girl who builds stuff to help her friends. And while that seems probably in this room like a really great and natural idea, you did not exactly get the kind of response that you thought you would when you went out. When I first had this idea, I became so obsessed with it. It was like one of the, it sounds corny, but it was one of those life calling kind of fireworks going off moments, quit my job, you know, hold up in what my happened? apartment. How did you get the, what, what was the moment of truth? Well, actually I, I recommend this to everybody. I started, it's kind of a nerdy San Francisco, Silicon Valley thing. But my friends and I started this club called Idea Brunch. It's kind of like a book club. And once a month we'd get together, make breakfast, and then each person would get up and share their latest big idea. And it was in one of those, and, and it was a really inspiring thing. And it's a great way, if you don't know what your passion is, to kind of get together with passionate people and creative people to come up with stuff. And it was actually in one of those that my girlfriend got up and said, you know, there, I'm an engineer, very few women. I grew up playing with my older brother's hand-me-down construction toys. That's what piqued my interest in engineering. Why are those boys toys? That's how the idea came about. And I became so obsessed with it. It was literally all I could think about and talk about. Uh, and so I quit my job. And at the time, I thought this was the best idea ever. My parents were like, oh, this is amazing. Best idea ever. And uh, I built. Your parents were cool with you quitting your job. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, my parents, my friends, you know, everybody was like, oh, this is amazing. How, how does this not exist? Uh, so I started doing research, putting prototypes together, and found that girls really love reading and characters, but STEM toys are really all about spatial building, and there's no story or character. And it was funny, because I would watch these girls, you know, not caring, you know, why am I building this thing with the instructions? You know, I don't care. Uh, but once you kind of bring in the story of, well, here are the characters, here's where we are, here's who's involved, they want to know, and then they, they get interested and they get motivated. So I had this really great insight. I started drawing books and making prototypes out of thread spools and stuff I could find around the house. And I took my prototype to the New York Toy Fair, which is like the big toy industry Which event. is the traditional way, right? Yes. To sell a toy. And you're supposed to get a booth at the toy fair and try to sell it into mom and pop stores. Well, everyone I talked to at the toy fair, all the old toy industry veterans, kind of looked at me and said, well, didn't you know that construction toys for girls don't sell? And girls like the pink aisle and boys like building, and that's Duh. human nature. <laughs> so I left that toy Were fair. Were they all men? A lot of, yeah, it was like white, old white men in suits, pretty much. <laughs> uh, which, and I thought engineering was male dominated. Well, so is the toy industry. Uh, they didn't get it really at all. Um, they told me it would never go mainstream. So uh, I went back home pretty dejected, to be honest, and worried that you know, I'd just quit my job and had these ramshackle prototypes in my apartment. <laughs> uh, what, you know, what am I going to do? But um, you know, I just realized that they didn't get it and that this was really badly needed. And um, I decided to move forward and did a Kickstarter campaign to launch it. So you didn't go, again, doing something kind of non-traditional. You didn't even 
try to go the VC route first? No, I just decided that by doing Kickstarter, because at the time, that was right when the Pebble Watch Kickstarter went huge, and I thought, well, this is a great opportunity for me to put this idea out there and see if anyone besides my parents thinks it's a good idea. <laughs> and with Kickstarter, you can test a price point that you were thinking of, and with the product, you have the opportunity, unlike other avenues, where you can tell the story about it. Because Goldie Blocks wasn't just about making a toy to sit on a shelf, it was really kind of my authentic story of how I came to the idea and the impact that it could make and the importance of why we need it. And that Kickstarter video ended up going viral. And suddenly all those old toy industry people started calling and saying, you know, I, I want to carry Goldie Blocks. And then how the, much did you raise in that campaign? The uh, Kickstarter video raised about a quarter million dollars. And then actually after the campaign had ended, the video went viral on YouTube and we ended up doing a million dollars in pre-orders before we had made a toy yet. So, so fascinating because it was actually social media that, and in not, you know, the prototyping itself and all these traditional things that, that, that didn't work and, and these new ways of, of looking at the world that did. So this was just two years ago, right? Exactly, like almost exactly two years ago? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to bring you a little bit up to date, um, we'll go through a few of these things, but the short answer is that Goldie Blocks has exploded. And last year on Amazon, it was? Uh, number one, number two, best-selling toys. Of all, overall. That's not girl toys, that's not building toys, right? Um, another really kind of interesting moment in, in uh, the twists and turns of this business happened when you put out um, a video that used the Beastie Boys song, Girls. And it was a little bit of an empowering video to show the toy, but what happened? So with Goldie Blocks, we don't have a traditional marketing budget like the big, huge toy companies. And so we're just, you know, how do we get this message out? And how do we take this idea uh, from, you know, beyond a toy into really a movement and make engineering cool and fun for girls? So we came up with this idea to make a video uh, where we built a giant Rube Goldberg machine out of princess toys. And we set the song to the Beastie Boys Girls. We did a parody where we changed the lyrics from girls to do the laundry to girls to build the spaceship, girls to code the new app. And uh, we put it out, we didn't really know what was going to happen, and it turns out that actually in the first week it got over eight and a half million views, and the band wasn't happy with the... Uh, with, Not happy at all. ...with that, so, um, you know, we ended up... Uh, I they sued. I experienced my very first lawsuit, and uh, a very high profile one at that, and, you know, I learned a lot from it. We ended up settling, and the results actually are going to charity for uh, charities that promote girls in STEM, which is something that we want to do anyway. And through the process, actually, it's opened up opportunities to actually collaborate with musicians. And one of the things that we learned from it, we've actually reached out to bands now, and we found that there are so many artists and celebrities who want to be involved in our movement. And most recently, we started working with the rock band Metric, whose lead singer, Emily Haynes, is this amazing kind of feminist rocker, and she has become the voice of Goldie Blocks in our cartoons and mobile games now, so. That's amazing. Um, I wanna make sure we have time for a couple questions. This is going faster than I thought, which <laughs> usually means we're having a good time. Um, but did, after that, then, you won a Super Bowl ad contest, got a, a, a free, what is that, a $4 million cost? I think something around that. Um, they won a contest to get a Super Bowl ad on, and then just last week there was a Goldie Blocks float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So um, I'll open to questions in one quick second, but I want to ask you sort of as a female founder of a tech-oriented company, has it been harder for you, um, it's obviously been harder for you to get off the ground perhaps, but how much of it do you see as a gender issue? I definitely see the gender issue in what I'm doing, and in some ways, it's actually a huge advantage to be a female founder. There okay. are you know, organizations like this one who want to promote women and get the word out, and I think that actually I've gotten a lot of media attention that I may not have otherwise gotten uh, because I'm a female founder. Uh, but I do see the challenge in terms of kind of fundraising and getting into that boys club because you know the money comes from the boys club. 
And I think one of the things that we're fortunate with Goldie Blocks is that a lot of the old boys have daughters. Uh, so, you know, I think that that's an advantage for us, but I can see how um, it would be difficult to break into that because, you know, people want to invest and inv advise on things that they understand. And, uh, you know, again, luckily, because we've got dads out there, I think they get it and people want more girls in engineering. Uh, but it's a, it's a challenge. challenge. Who's got a question? Right here, just wait for the mic, please. Thank you, and um, I'm a huge fan. I've been following you for past two years. I have a new daughter, so I'll share a very quick story, and then I have a question for you. Uh, I'm an engineer, my husband's an engineer. I'm really into uh, making sure we get more girls into STEM. Uh, when we had our daughter, she's only five months old. Instead of doing a nursery, we actually created a lab for her. And wow. one of the first toys that I have for her is a Goldie Blocks builder set. Uh, she's only five months, so she can't use it right now. <laughs> she's looking at it. Yeah, she's, she's thinking deep at it. thoughts. She's thinking about it already. <laughs> so, you know, great job because I think this is absolutely needed uh, to get more girls into STEM. So, my question to you was how is your company actually measuring that? Is this actually influencing the number of girls excited about STEM fields or even considering those as professional choices for careers? That's a great question. Actually, uh, something that's been really great is we've been approached by researchers uh, like Penn State University, for example. They've been doing an independent study about Goldie Blocks, uh, and, and there are several others as well, which I think is great because you know if we if Goldie Blocks commissions a study, it's not exactly the most unbiased thing. <laughs> so there are actually studies going on right now, which is really interesting, and we've been in touch with the researchers to get the feedback so that we can incorporate that into our product design moving forward. But you know, really, the thing that I uh, that I measure is, um, and what's so great now with technology is, we have social media, and we can read every tweet, we, every video, every Facebook post of these anecdotal, amazing stories of the impact that it's making on girls. Like, I can't even make this stuff up. There are moms writing in that say things like, oh, my daughters are obsessed with Goldie Blocks and they make up songs that they sing in the kitchen about, I'm an engineer and I love it. And it's like, you can't even make it up. So it's really amazing because kids are so impressionable. And you, it, this is really different. You put it out in front of them and it opens up the opportunity where maybe they've been kind of inundated with princesses, but we all know that girls are very multifaceted and have other interests. And this gives them that outlet. Uh, we're going to have to close up, but I think for all of you who are um, being forced into buying Anna and Elsa frozen toys this Christmas, we have a very worthy counterpoint. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie, very, very much. Thank you, that was great.